Good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church uh, online community. Uh, today we are celebrating the fifth Thursday of Lent. And to begin our celebration, we shall sing, We Are the Light of the World. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Bless us, O Lord, make us poor in spirit, bless us, O Lord, our God. We are the light of the world, may our light shine before all that they may see the good that we do and give glory to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. My dear friends, as we are gathered today in this celebration, we call to mind our prayers and petitions. We also remember the petitions of our loved ones. We pray for those who are in the front line, keeping the supply chain going. We pray especially for those who are taking care of the sick and for sick people as well, that we may all be consoled by the mercy and love of God. And we call to mind our sins and failures and we ask God to grant us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Be near, O Lord, to those who plead before you, and look kindly on those who place their hope in your mercy, that cleansed from the stain of their sins, they may persevere in holy living and be made full heirs of your promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The response is, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. You, descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, 
King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as, his, as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? Or the prophets, who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing, but it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, father rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old. And you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. Dear friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. In the gospel today, Jesus makes the bold claim, whoever keeps my word will never see death. Naturally, this elicited a strong reaction from the people who heard him. They remembered Abraham, who kept the word of God in his lifetime, yet he also died. The many prophets who followed him, Isaiah, Jeremiah, they all kept the word of God. Yet, they did see death. They too died eventually. So hearing the claim of Jesus, they naturally ask, how can you say that? How can you say that whoever keeps your word will never die? When Abraham, who kept God's word, and that is God's word that he kept, still died. Are you greater than Abraham? Are you greater than the prophets who died? But we know what Jesus meant by his words. He did not mean physical life and death. For truly, physical death is a real human experience. He'd, rather, he meant eternal life. He meant that physical death does not have the finality because those who keep the word of God shall live forever. That is, shall gain eternal life. Yes, Abraham physically died, he experienced physical death. The prophets experience physical death, yet they still live. They live in eternity. Their names are written in the book of life. They are remembered by us, by generations after us. Their legacies live on. What a consolation for all of us, isn't it? Especially that we see so many deaths. Doctors who die because of because they are keeping their words, their oaths. Priests who die because they are keeping their vows, their ministerial vows. Soldiers who die because they are keeping their pledge of loyalty. And their names are perpetuated in the annals of history. What more when we keep the word of God, when we keep our words to God? What more when we do our earthly duties in the name of God? in fidelity to our Christian vocation. Not only our names become part of history, our names become part of the book of life. Very appropriately, we celebrate today the feast of St. Pedro Calungsod, the Philippines' second saint. He was born in the Visayas region of the Philippines in 1654. As a catechist, he went with some Spanish Jesuit missionaries from the Philippines to evangelize the Chamorros in Guam in 1668. 
Life was hard for the missionaries, but the mission was blessed with so many conversions. A Chinese exile named Choco, and views of the prestige that the missionaries were gaining, started to spread rumors that the ba baptismal water of the missionaries was poisonous. And since some infants died after they were baptized, some of the natives believed him and apostatized. There, there was this particular father who got enraged because his child was baptized by Padre Diego Luis de San Vitores, assisted by Pedro. He became so angry that he, spurled, that he hurled spears at them. Pedro would have, would have been able to escape, but he did not want to ab abandon Padre Diego. So he and the priests were hacked to death, and their bodies were thrown into the sea on April 2nd, 1672. They died. Pedro died. But they died faithful to their mission, to their vocation, to God. Both of them were beatified by Pope John Paul II on March 5th, 2000, and Pedro was canonized by Benedict XVI on October 16, 2012. Yes, they died. Physically, they died. But in truth, they live on. They live eternally in heaven. Amen. Jesus has assured us that his word is the source of eternal life. We receive it with thanksgiving and live it with charity. For our bishops, that, he may, that they may receive the grace to, leave, uh, to, lead, to lead our people here with thanksgiving and prepare for better days, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper love for scriptures, that we may be nourished by God's word, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to grow in love for God every day, so that our lives have meaning and purpose, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the medical teams testing people and caring for people with coronavirus, that supporting one another, they will be kept safe and they may continue to care for people with compassion. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our own personal petitions. We pray for the intentions of our loved ones. We, care, we pray for those who have asked that we pray for them and for their intentions. And we pray for the recently deceased members of our communities. We also pray for the intentions of, of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Gabriel Misa, Santo Kaliri, Tan Vu, and Madi Nangkayon. Lord, we constantly seek your face, judge us with mercy, and let us be filled with your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With a humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may your sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray on these sacrificial offerings that they may profit our conversion and the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those who unite yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Gerald our Bishop, Alberto our Coadjutor Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the blessed 
Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. We now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace with you all. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. With him, he has given us all things. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us uh, today in this Mass. Join us again tomorrow, same time, 8 o'clock in the morning. If you have not subscribed yet to our Facebook or YouTube channels, please uh, do so, so that whenever we go live, you may be notified. And finally, if you have not yet given or uh, uh, given your contribution to the church for this week, please do so by going to the office and dropping your envelopes on the door. There's a hole there or going online for your donations. Thank you very much for supporting the church, especially in this time of difficulty. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Now go and remain faithful to the Lord. Thanks be to God.